Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the NADA webinar series. My name is Joe Fleming, and I'll be your host today. From all of us here at the National Automobile Dealer Association, we're happy to have you. Today's webinar will be recorded and available on NADA's website at nada.org. As a quick reminder, NADA Education is an online resource and learning tool available to you and your entire team as a free member benefit. Every one of your staff members can create their own login and access our over 500 online resources. We have an hour scheduled for this webinar, including questions and answers. Please type any questions you have for our presenters in the Q&A panel on your screen. You can find this located at the bottom of your screen at any time during the presentation. At the end, we'll ask as many questions as we have in our time allotted. Mm -hmm. Our topic today is service to sustain sustainable success in 2022. Our presenters are Jose Gomez, the commercial naval manager at Automotive Mastermind, and Luciano Ross, the national performance manager at Automotive Mastermind. Jose, Luciano, thanks for joining us today. Jose, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Joe. I appreciate that. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, super excited to have you guys here uh, and join us today as we talk about service to sales. So a little bit about us prior to us getting kind of going. So again, my name is Jose Gomez. Uh, my counterpart here is Luciano Ross. Um, so over the course of the last two years, uh, uh, Luciano and I have embarked across the country, really speaking to uh, dealerships across the nation on service to sales. So one of the components that we want to do today is really engage and talk about the the key findings that we've that we've discovered through these conversations, and also uh, understanding that there's a key component behind uh, establishing a good uh, data driven service to sales process. So excited to speak with you today, Luciano. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Uh, thanks everyone uh, for joining us today. Um, a little background on myself, uh, very much like Jose. I've uh, been in the automotive industry um, for around 15 years or so, um, much of which uh, devoted to the retail side of the business in the trenches. Uh, joined Mastermind about six years ago. Last three years, uh, dove deep into all service drive uh, best practices, uh, how stores are doing it long term, uh, how stores are uh, not very successful and how to help them with best practices. So we're very happy today to share those uh, with you. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely. So before we get going, uh, get going we want to ask you guys a quick poll question, right? So as, as you start thinking service to sales, we want to ask a key component of, 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 of how our conversation is going to be structured today. So that question uh, is going to be, do you feel you, or your dealership currently has a strong and data-driven service to sales process in place today? So when you look at your operations, um, most folks, you know, that's kind of the key question that we start with when we have these conversations with stores. But one of the key components that we want to make sure that you think about is the data-driven aspect of the service to sales process. So some may have a service to sales uh, process in place, but is it truly data driven? So we're going to give a, a couple of seconds here to, to let you guys answer this question, and then we'll we'll kind of talk about more about as to the results and, and and kind of how the data driven aspect of it becomes such an important piece. And Luch, you start this conversation. I think that's one of the key components of the key questions that you ask when when you engage much, yeah. as well, right? When I, when I go into a store, is my very first question: yeah. Do you a have a process? Uh, and number two, if you do have a process, is it is it optimal, right? Do you think yeah. you could do better? Exactly. So Let's I'm not it. I'm not too shocked here. I'm I'm impressed that close to fifty percent do wow. have a, a well strong process. Uh, but if you are in the bucket of of a no, uh, by all means, this is uh, a great session for you, and we can certainly uh, provide you some guidance on how to get this going. Absolutely. So yeah, 60% 60, 60 of them said no, 40% said yes. So great. I'm glad that for those of you that are yes, you still took the time to join our session. And hopefully we add some key components as to kind of maximizing this process and really honing in on the importance of it. So before we get going, I want to just look at the road ahead, right? Being able to talk about a key couple of data points that I like to share uh, as I engage in this conversation. So the very first one is, I wanna point out that the average age of light vehicles in the US has actually reached a span of 12.2 12 12 years in 2022, meaning consumers are keeping those vehicles longer, right? And being able to drive their cars, uh, which is an all time high today. Uh, that component is important because if they're driving the vehicles past that three or 36 mark, 
or even that service main service plans that you guys all offer with different OEMs, that means that that, that consumer has to go somewhere to service that car. Why? Which, which adds to the key component of us engaging with these consumers and having another aspect of being able to leverage the fact that these uh, c consumers are actually coming into your dealership. The next component is, as we know, the new live vehicle sales fell 12.6% month of a month in May of 2022 uh, to a star of 12.7 million units, which is down 24.9% over 2021, which we all know the reason probably a lot of that happened because of the current inventory situation that we were dealing with. Uh, and so that, that adds to the fact that we needed a way to be able to engage and acquire inventory, which is service to sales becomes a key component to be able to do that. And we'll talk about that today as well. And then the last component is 34% of consumers prefer getting their vehicle service at the dealership versus general repair shops, which is 34%. That number is not very high, but does the story tell you where the consumer is going? Are we digging deeper into the Carfax report, into the history of the vehicle and how that consumer is driving that car to be able to engage that dealership back to your service drive? And again, another component that we're going to talk about on how we do that uh, when we're engaging those uh, consumers in your service drive. Which leads me to say consumers views of buying conditions for vehicles have declined to its lowest uh, in May of 2022. So according to Mannheim, that the consumer is saying that, it, that they're, they're really not they're wanting to engage with the, with dealerships. We're not really necessarily looking for a new vehicle. We're, we're okay with a used car, which again, the service drive becomes a key component for you to engage and acquire vehicle inventory uh, through your service drive today. So just engaging in conversations, not necessarily wanting to sell a car, which is that's something that we're gonna talk about. It's not the key component of the service drive, but just creating and starting the conversation becomes a key component. Now, the last piece I'll share with you on this is the conquest opportunity, right? So I'm in Austin, Texas, Luciano's down in Miami. I can tell you, I can step out of my house today, walk outside and drive, and I see construction happening all around me. These consumers are moving into Austin, as, as, as most of you probably know, but are we doing everything that we can to engage not only the consumer and bring that consumer into our service drive, but that consumer in three to four years is probably going to be looking to purchase a car somewhere, somehow with so much technology being around uh, in the area and available to us today, m making sure we use and maximize that service drive to be able to engage and keep the consumer and just introduce ourselves at the dealership as a component or a way for the dealership to do business with us in, in some sort of uh, shape or fashion. So that those I, I share all those components to you that uh, that to, to tell you that the data driven service drive process comes down to some a couple of key factors right so understanding your consumer right knowing your consumer understanding what kind of components to look for before we just go out there and shake a hand give a high five say hello to the consumer actually knowing where they've been. Have they been to your dealership before? Have they gone to a, a quick uh, a quick car, a Jiffy Lube or somewhere else? So you can engage and understand what is important to them, right? The next component is providing them a right offer, right? So do you have a, do you understand how they bought their car last time? Was it a lease? Was it a finance? Was it cash? If it's a Conquest customer establishing that conversation, providing what we call a vehicle financial analysis, which is just a high word to say, just a, a packet showing them their Carfax report, maybe the, the offer that you're going to offer to them and even a trade value. Uh, and then of course, lastly, what Luciano was, is going to talk about here is the consistent personalized and personable approach. Not just to say a uh, set it and forget it. In this day and age, we, we know that the, the, the up system or, or the floor, the sales floors is, is we're not seeing a lot of traffic, but from a service perspective, you know that it's happening all the time and the consumers are coming in and engaging. So if you're consistent with your approach, you're, at, you're, you're gonna be successful. So in, in the right tools and technology is also a key component, which we let's just help us, help me or help you understand that the DMS only tells half the story. So hopefully you have a, a comprehensive data mining technology inside your dealerships today, whether it's your marketing agency, whether it's with technologies like, um, like Automotive Mastermind and everyone else, equity mining tools, something that comes together to help you create a process that really tells the good story using real data to engage with the consumers. So 
the service experience and, and what consumers want is not necessarily just a handshake or saying hello. They want transparency, they want personalization, and they want convenience, right? So when we engage in these consumers and when we talk to them, what we want to see is, again, not trying to sell them a car. It's just about a touch point, making sure that we understand the consumer and understand exactly what process is going to uh, come into play when we're actually engaging with these customers. So making sure that we know who they are, we know what they've, how they bought last time, and we know a little bit about that. So that's kind of the, the service experience and how we want to engage the service drive. So that's the, the component, Luciano. Talk to us through kind of the process, right? What do we look like? And before we do that, we want to pose our next question. So as you're building these, this service to sales process, what is the greatest challenge that you currently are looking at when, when creating this process in place? And, and Luciano, talk us through uh, what we've seen. I know you were just literally in uh, two different states the last, uh, last week. So what, what do you typically see in this situation? Obviously, taking away the low inventory crisis as the number one challenge everyone is experiencing. Uh, we're, we wanted to uh, answer your question with, you know, throughout your career in developing a service to sales process, what has been the main challenge? Exactly. Um, so was it, um, you know, silos between service and sales as, as the team buy-in? Uh, is it just staffing, finding the right person? Is it just not efficient? Uh, in your time, uh, or are you missing the resources and the tools for you to uh, adequately put a process in place? Uh, so we'll give you a few more minutes for you to answer this. Um, and I'm, I'm, I think I know the answer, but I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys um, are able to select here. Awesome. Give them a few more seconds here, and I think we got it. Oh, we got a we got a good low average here. We got staffing thirty six percent, Luch team team too. Ryan. It's 32%. Time and efficiency is at 22 and then tools and resources at 11%. Thoughts on that? Top two. And goes directly into us staying in what worked in the past might not necessarily work in the future. If we move over to the next slide, um, this has been, if not one of the main reasons when asking or having this conversations with dealers is, you know, we used to have this great guy in the drive. He was able to get 30, 40 cars a month. He got promoted to a sales manager role. Ever since then, we have not been able to find someone like you. Yeah. Um, which is, we're trying to find that unicorn. And that's when it becomes staffing a main issue. I understand the way of the business now uh, with finding techs, uh, advisors, salespeople, just because of COVID and a lot of people just thinking about starting to work again, right? It's been right. an issue. We understand that. But we got to be a little bit more mindful of what kind of process and person we're thinking about placing in this particular process, right? Um, so building an efficiency process, when we talk about how is your, for the team or, or the dealers who had uh, said that you currently have a process, right? We want to identify what's working well and how can we make it better? If you've done something in the past where it worked fine, uh, you know, there's a few little tweaks and, and added processes that can optimize that to over, overcome and get that benchmark return. Um, is the team that you currently have optimizing that process, right? And to make this a, a full circle, if we don't know what our goals are in our service lane, uh, we will never be able to achieve them, right? So setting up uh, achievable expectations out of the team that we put together to do this process. Yeah, and, and, and Luch, just to ask you a question here, so I'm a general manager, right, or I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a general sales manager, and I'm thinking of this process, I'm trying to implement it. What are some of the key questions that, 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 we, that I should ask myself when, when, when engaging inside of those, uh, you know, inside of, inside of that thought process of, man, I really need to get a process in place? Yeah, so, so Question number one would be, right, how many, how many ROs are we doing per month, really? Are, are we, uh, uh, do we do 100 ROs a day? Do we do 20 ROs a day? Is our service drive healthy enough for us to spend the time and efforts in putting something together? Even a small store can benefit from this, but if we really are looking at a store that has 100 ROs a day, that will be one of, one of the main questions, right? How many people are needed to, to achieve that support? If it's a 50 RO a day store, uh, we might be able to get away with only a single person. If right. we're doing 100 or plus, how does that look like? Do we even know how to properly execute that, right? Uh, it could be 
you know, are we uh, able to penetrate our market share, right? Uh, for those conquest opportunities? Are we doing any sort of conquest marketing to our service clients? Yeah, Customers yeah. Are, are might be in your PMA AOI, as so they, we were mentioning before in Florida, Texas, Idaho is at a 2.5% uh, increase in population for the last five years. So how are you making yourself known within your market that you're available to secure their retention on a service drive visit, which yeah. consequently can turn into a long time customer uh, within the buying journey, right? Which is ideally what we're trying to generate out of the service land is a, is a long time customer. Yeah, and then you've got to win twice, right? You're winning them through the service drive, especially on the conquest side, you, you got to win them first in the service lane and, and, and just show them a great experience, roll out the red carpet, because again, they've never in, in, interacted with your store. The second component is you're gonna win twice by hopefully being able to sell them a car. But the first recipe of success is auditing your team. Yeah, this is this is very important, right? Uh, if we put a team together for you or, or you put a team uh, on your store, you know, th does your team know where the where the prospects are, how to how to properly prospect your service name, specifically in today's world when we're talking about personalization, uh, it's not the right time to maybe put an offer on every single car because we don't have the new inventory to sustain somebody getting out of their old car and putting them on a new one. So we we want to be make sure that we audit our team so they're properly executing the prospects. Right? Um, does our team know the customer? Right? We always talk about Service to sales sometimes fails because service advisors are the ones with the relationship on the customer. We sold right. them the car, but the service advisor knows when the kid went to, to baseball, when he broke his arm playing soccer. So we want to understand that this team has to work together in understanding uh, the life behaviors and, and the day-to-day -day of the customers right. coming in to be able to have those communications. Um, which I would add on that is just a Carfax report, right? Like I'm a big, I'm a big fan of that. It's just, you can't come in and just saying, Hey, Mr. Dealer hi, or Mr. Customer, how you doing? You want to buy a car today? Right. It, it, that's, that's not a service to sales process. It, it takes, it's, it's not, there's a hunter and a farmer, right? Mentality and component to our business, especially selling cars. The, the yeah. service drive aspect of it is really farming, right? You're planting seeds to potentially be able to earn the right to sell the consumers a, a car. Is you're saying hello, right? To your point, talking to the service drive, is any, anything I should know about it, right? Or, or just even, hey, I hadn't seen you in service. If you look at the Carfax history report and, and you hadn't seen them in service in, in eight or nine months, hey, is everything okay, right? Is, is, did we do anything? Or, or how can we help you? How can we bring you back? Yeah, absolutely. We can uh, we can go into our next slide, which uh, basically goes back to uh, setting the right goals on our service lane. Yeah. Um, so just just to give you some tangible numbers, if you are doing about 100 ROs a day, um, we should be properly uh, aiming to to contact or connect with have uh, offers presented, shake hands to 20 percent of those clients coming in. Right, we we are not allowed to say everybody is is a is a unit. Uh, even though now we want to buy every single car that comes in through the service lane, we want to proactively approach those twenty percent and aim to close that to that ten percent, which translates to two cars a day. And when we say two cars a day, it's not necessarily two sales a day. Uh, a pre-owned acquisition, it's a win. That counts as a one. Right. Um, a customer trading their old car into a new or certified pre-owned vehicle, uh, that's that's a win, right? So when we're talking about two units, it's a cumulative work between acquisition, pre-owned sales, new car sales, what yeah. you should be aiming at. Um, tracking, uh, KPIs, right? Making sure that we're able to sustain what's happening. I, I think I had this conversation yesterday with a GM, right? Putting a service to sales process in place, it's very much like, like an internet lead department, like a BDC, like any other lead source. It's, it's, it's a lead source. Right. So if we're not tracking what's happening. Uh, we're, we're just shooting blanks. Uh, we need to be able to understand how many offers did we present out of how many ROs did we see, how many were customer paid, how many were internal, right? Really understanding, dissecting those and tracking them. So if we have a service to sales dedicated person, how many appraisals did you do that day? How many confirmed appointments do you have for tomorrow for a potential appraisal? 
Right. Um, how many cu customers engage with you in test driving a new vehicle? How many TOs have you done to a new manager? Uh, so these are very important uh, tracking measures that if you're not currently doing that, uh, you, you absolutely have to, you should. And, and you're measuring success too, right? So let's look at a, a six day working period, right? I know in Texas, we're off on Sundays. Some of you guys are probably working seven days a week, but if you do this, right, you can look back at the end of the month and say, hey, Monday was my busiest day. I need my best guy that is engaging with my service drive working that Monday. If my if Wednesday I talk to only two or three people, right, and but Monday I talk to 20, Wednesday maybe I take a different approach. Maybe I take an emailing approach. Maybe I have my service BDC confirm appointments and have meeting with my purchasing manager, my vehicle purchasing manager, my VO acquisition manager. Those are the reasons why tracking and measuring component, the KPIs and everything is very important because at least it lets you size yourself up for success for the future as well. Let's talk about the basic strategy of the actual process, right? And I think here's where uh, my conversation with a lot of dealers around the nation uh, do one of, one of the four steps, right? Um, when we're talking about what is an actual process and what should we be doing to optimize our return on the service drive, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're looking at a proactive, reactive, leave behind follow-up approach, right? Which is first and foremost, we need to make sure we're using whatever technology that we have, equity mining data that allows us to see what is coming down the pipeline on our service lane. Here in Mastermind, we provide a score uh, to tie into each customer, our behavioral prediction score, which helps the team easily dissect the potential cars that we can buy, customers who might be out of warranty, um, lease buyouts. So really two to three days is when we start mining the service, right? So proactively making a phone call, uh, sending an email, confirming the appointment, and maybe just planting a seed of here is a new process that we have in our service lane. Um, we might be able to provide you with a complimentary uh, uh, evaluation on your vehicle. Is this something that you might be interested in having? Yes or no. Uh, very simple, not, hey, here's 299 offer on, uh, I, I, no numbers, it's just planting a seed. Um, the next step is, if we already have some confirmed appointments, we already know what's coming the next day, it's engagement in the actual drive, having someone that can translate the message face-to-face. -face. Uh, we, we started working this even when COVID was up and running, and we had to get very creative with customers uh, dropping the cars for VIP uh, drop-off and pickups. There was no way we could shake hands in the service drives. Um, I think we're, we're, we're past that. Uh, we need engagement again, back to having conversations in the service drive. And this could be just as opening a door or offering coffee and water that right. could lead to, did you know the warranty on your car is up? Are you somewhat prepared? Do you have a plan in place? We can help you. Uh, when you're done talking to your service advisor, I would love to have a conversation with you. Um, and this cannot necessarily have to be a salesperson, right? When we talk about this process. Um, if we miss some of them, right? If, if you are that 100 RO a day dealer uh, where you can, you, there's so much BC uh, uh, stuff going in the drive that you can only talk to so many people there. What plan do we have for the customers that we've missed, but our potential cars that we do want to acquire, right? So the proper leave behind approach works. It's, it's a lot of consistency until we start seeing the dividends, but it works long term. So meaning we missed the car, they did a VIP drop off and pick up, making sure the car goes home with an offer inside, yeah. either a, a, a sight on scene appraisal. Uh, next to the decline services that they didn't want to do is a conversation started at a dinner table. Honey, why did you decline the fuel injection cleaner? Oh, they're giving you 30 grand for your car? Let me call John and see what's going on. Exactly. Um, and, and, you know, every customer should be greeted. I'm, I'm a firm believer on that. Uh, we never know. Even if they bought the car last month, they might not like the color. In today's world, we, we might be able to get them out <laughs> if we have something in inventory, right? Yeah, and so in some dealerships too. I know I spoke to a dealer down in Houston um, about this. Is they've they've implemented the the valet service right where they're dropping uh, where they're they're picking up the customer, dropping the vehicles off. But even if you're doing that, right, being able to create those folders that Luciano talked about and being able to have those folks have access to it when you turn the keys in, it's like, hey, here's your car back, and by the way, we left 
a folder in your in your vehicle to just talk about your vehicle financial analysis. It's, it's just giving you an overview of where you're at today with your vehicle, right? We, we were able to give you an estimated market value for the car just so you kind of know if you're in perfect equity position right now to trade, reach out to the our, our, our purchasing team and we'd love to in, explore that. But even if you if you don't have the consumers in your in your um, uh, in your in your uh, waiting area today, you met, let's make sure we're still engaging with them and even p- tasking that that source or that person that drops the vehicle back off to just give them an, an opportunity to understand that, hey, we have this created for you. Uh, when we are identifying these opportunities, I mentioned it before, it's, it's very important that we understand uh, the, current, the current status of the customer pulling in in the drive. Uh, yeah. We have so many technologies uh, that allow us to see everything that happens with the vehicles, we get their Carfax report, uh, we can pull their contracts, uh, making sure we understand if they're out of warranty, if there is a new product that we just got in. I think a lot of conversations now, even with, with domestic brands, not even the luxury anymore, uh, we're, we're starting to see the, the customers actually placing orders for new vehicles. They understand that there, there is a low inventory crisis and they know they might want to stay with the brand uh, so making sure we let them know, right, uh, if their lease is coming to an end in eight, 12 months, they might not be the right customer to talk to. Just letting them know, hey, even when we're a year out in inventory, so let's start looking relatively close uh, so we can plan something in the future for you. 100%. Uh, which leads us to, to the next conversation, which, um, you know, if, if this is not the biggest part of uh, our current status or our current stage with low inventory, uh, we definitely want to use a service to ser- uh, service uh, to sales process um, to acquire pre-owned vehicles out of our service drive, right? Reducing our costs, right? I don't think uh, in my conversations around the nation, uh, I think only a five percent of co- of dealers are maybe buying cars at the auction, and that's just because they're trying to buy a- everything they can, uh, but that, not because they want to. Um, the fees and and the amount of money that we're spending to acquire these vehicles is it's it's unheard of. So when we're looking at our own service lane, uh, you know, this is critical for us to um, approach that as a, as a lead source. I said it, I said it before. Um, one of the, the main conversations that I have with a lot of, a lot of uh, dealers is how, how is service and sales kind of working together? Some dealers do a great job, uh, but most dealers suffer from this. Uh, they, they, separate departments, they do a great job in service. They do a great job in sales. They do. However, when, when they're doing their own thing in silos. Um, so when we're talking about a process and starting to put offers or appraisals in cars, uh, you know, this is a, a number one management up down conversation to make sure we don't uh, lose the morale on our service advisors, making thinking that they might lose uh, commissions on cars that they can work on our techs. Uh, we got to put a good plan in place where everybody gets compensated properly. So we've had and we've you know collected several pay plans along the way that can overcome these issues. Yeah, and I think compensation is key, right? And and we have to look at it 100%. from an operator standpoint. Is the investment on 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 the service to sales process? Yes, it, it's it's you know I think one of the main questions and one of the main components that I had conversations with is asking a general manager asking me is like, well, Jose, like how am I going to compensate, uh, you know, the, the service advisor and at the same time compensate the sales advisor at the same exact time? Well, you know, if you look at it from a perspective of, of acquiring cars, the cost for you to acquire that inventory through auction with the auction fees and then transportation is going to be more, probably sometimes double what it is by doing that than actually just paying, you know, John over as on the service side and making sure that they both are winning twice. And at the end of the day, if you buy that vehicle, right, and you're, and you're, and you're going to acquire that car, and you're going to flip it over, you're still going to have to do that work, right? And I think overall, you're going to, you got to look at the big picture of being able to say, if we can have both of these guys working hand in hand, rather than working against each other, that's the key component that's going to bring that service to sales process to the next level. You want to make sure that they know it's a one team, one show, and we're going to work together to, to, to overall be more, the most profitable that we can, both on the service and sales side as well. Yeah, and with pre-owned, it, it's it's the right team uh, to, to make sure that they understand and analyze the strategy to acquire these vehicles, right? No one that uh, more than 
your current dealer understands your market, uh, your trends, um, you know, what is, what is your, your local regional uh, trends, uh, what have you sold the most in the last 30, 60, 90 days, what are you in the most need of um, when looking at your pre-owned inventory? Uh, so selecting with a highlighter, the cars that, that you want this team to emphasize the most, right? You don't want to lose this model this year. We definitely need to talk to that particular customer. Um, so I think having our pre-owned manager uh, sort of oversee uh, the incoming service appointments, it's, it's key for, him, for his buy-in down our team to make sure that I want to buy those cars. Um, so yeah, definitely getting to uh, one another thing, Luciano is, uh, is, is using your marketing team, right? So if you're, if you're doing SEM, SEO, and you're doing any type of campaigns or you have any, any type of conquesting, uh, uh, campaigns that you're deploying right now for your dealership at the end of the month, ask them a question and say, Hey, what are customers buying? What is our top brands that we're acquiring through, through uh, that the people are buying through the market in my AOI? Because that component and that question is going to help you prepare and understand what type of vehicles you should probably be looking after, especially if you're if a brand that, that, that you're number one in the market of, of, of people that are people are looking for. If, they're, if it's a, you know, for example, if you're a Toyota brand and, and a Camry or Forerunner is the top brand, top model in your market, understanding that is going to help you on, put a plan in place in your service drive to say, okay, I have 25 Camrys. I have 45 forerunners that are coming in for service this month. Let's go after those and let's engage with them because we really do need those in vehicles in our inventory. Yeah. Okay, it goes hand to hand with this, this part of the slide, right, of, of making sure we, we assess our trades and our buyback. I think right now uh, we're, we're shooting blind, right? Everything that comes in, doesn't matter if it has a bad Carfax, if it has 100,000 miles, we want to buy it. We want it, it. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but we definitely should assess every single trade. And there's, a, there's multiple ways for us to dissect and filter those lists out, right? Making sure, hey, if we know this customer owned the vehicle for over three, five years, uh, you know, warranty, factory warranty but might be out on the vehicle, right? Uh, pulling a Carfax report before the car comes in, maybe going a step further and pulling a payoff in their car and understanding how deep, you know, did they roll any negative equity on that car or not? Are they in a huge uh, positive equity position? Do we want to make sure we maybe discuss that with the customer? Um, you know, uh, we'll look at um, um, repairs, obviously, as a, as a key component. But I would say the biggest one is filtering down specific mileage and a specific time of ownership uh, to really have a personalized conversation with the customers coming in. And what is the reason we want to buy their car? In, in those meetings, you know, I think another thing, another, another piece that I think about as we speak through this is making sure your purchasing team, right, has a conversation or has a meeting in place either on a weekly basis, maybe every Friday or every Monday to help them understand what they're looking for when they're looking at a at purchasing a pre-owned unit. Because if you're putting a, a team together and you're putting them on the service driver, let's say you're putting your sales team out there, let's make sure that they're, they understand and comprehend the process of what a purchasing manager looks for in order to say, yeah, that's the car that I want. I, I get we're buying the 100,000 mile ones and stuff like that, but I'm sure we're looking for some good ones as well and, and some consistent vehicles and, and, and things that a purchasing manager may look for. And, so, and if you're a big store, right, if you're a bigger store, maybe even putting a purchasing manager and assigning that manager to specifically work with your service to sales team. So that way it, it's a cadence, it's a machine. They're, they're working consistently yeah. and they know exactly what they're looking for and putting that plan together prior to you actually executing and, and starting your week. One last thing that I wanna add here uh, on, on the trade ac acquisition side of the business, because I understand uh, that you know we can we can put offers in every in every trade because we don't have the inventory to sustain it and we don't want to upset customers. So uh, a good best practice that I've seen dealers do is uh, making sure we look at if the customer is a conquest, we don't have a way of uh, really understanding their their household. But checking our CRM, right? Is that their only car in their household? Is it two or three? And then can, can the family downsize to two cars? I've seen that happening across the nation. Every store that I go to. Proactively reviewing your data and every single platform and technology you have to have a better conversation uh, goes a long way, right? Why are you coming to me? Well, because I did see that you've owned this car for four years 
and you only put 15,000 miles, is this the only car in your home? Are you really driving that low mileage or you have other cars? Because right now you can get this amount of money on your car that you might probably not be able to get next year. Yeah, um, your financial yeah. condition on this vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and then lastly, the last component too, right? So we, when we talk about, you know, we've talked about adding and, and, and doing a service to sales process, which is strictly looking to, to sell that the next vehicle to the next consumer. Um, the second component has been, you know, acquiring vehicles uh, through the service drive and making sure you have a process in place that you're having active communication between your service uh, 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 team and your, your purchasing managers and both the, the, the folks that you are going to assign to run that service to sales process for you. But the last component for me, and I'm a data guy, and I love to share this 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 and, and communicate this with with the stores I speak with. Is driving retention through the service drive. So let's look at some numbers when we do, when we when we look at that, right? So in 2021, our dealer loyalty has dropped by 1.6 percent, while manufacturer and make loyalty decreased by 0.2 percent during the exact same period, right? So if you're asking yourself how can I how can I keep and and, and keep my loyalty intact? You have to look at how, at the, the the component of your service drive and making sure we're speaking with and communicating with whether the customer bought a car last week or if the consumer bought a car three or four years ago and hopefully you have a, a marketing strategy or a technology that tells you exactly that. But making sure that we're we're exploring those uh, those options and, and staying in front of those consumers in our service drive and understand again and I share this all the time and the the best way to remember is telling a real story using real data. So communicating a real story to the consumer using real data, whether it's, you know, you're fetching that information from the CRM, the Carfax report, a data mining tool that you may use. Now is the time to explore all the options to retain that, that, uh, that retention. So the other component is customer loyalty is no longer a guarantee, right? Because they have so many different technologies and, and because now they're being marketed to by so many different ways. They're, they're, they're looking and maybe I'm an Acura uh, owner and I'm looking, I get an offer from a BMW store and maybe I'm driving through. There's so much technology out there that, that is going to keep me and going to make me want to look at and explore a different option. And, but if I actually stay and come to your service drive, data shows that customer, customers are, that service at your dealership are two and a half times more likely to purchase their next vehicle from the same retailer. Right. So that's a big number. If you if you're a, a user and, and you're really trying to you've been and I've, I've, I've talked to a lot of dealerships that are in this state. They're like, man, I really need to put a process in place, man. I, I really should do that. But we go on to the next month. The next thing you know, it's December and you got the 13 month and you keep putting that off. I'm telling you now, in my opinion, and my recommendation is to really sit down talk to your team and actually put a process in place because now more than ever, your service drive can really lead to you keeping those customers and also growing them by being able to engage in those customers that are servicing with you, but didn't purchase. And, and what does that return look like, right? So let's look at the monetary value. We're all, we've all been in the business. We're all GMs or I'm not a GM, but you guys are GMs and we have a GM in the store that's looking, hey, what is the financial return uh, if, if I do this, right? So let's look at the value of that, that, that loyalty customer base. So you have a thousand cars a year. Let's say you sell those, right? And let's say you have a 45% loyalty rate out of those thousand cars uh, a month, okay? So out of those that 45% rate, that means you're selling 450 loyalty cars per year, okay? And then you look at 450 cars a year at a 4,000 uh, gross profit, where there's a service drive, where there, that's a per copy option, that is an overall gross per year of $1.8 million, which means that you have gained so much money just to by being able to maintain that 45% loyalty rate. Now, let's say that loyalty rate dropped and you didn't have a process in place or you didn't have a way to communicate with those consumers and that rate dropped 10%. You now have 350 cars, which is 100 less cars that you had before, and then you had uh, 350 cars per year times that $4,000 profit, you have now lost $400,000 worth just by not communicating or dropping that loyalty rate. So if you set that standard and you set that goal of saying, hey, I'm going to try to keep my loyalty rate where I'm at last year, great, you're going to do well. But if you set a goal of, ex of extending that by 5%, 10%, you now can see that the return and the actual financial return is greater than it's ever been today. 
So with that being said, you know, protect proactively defending your customer base. Luch, what yeah, do you this think is, about that? Any this is very that important as, uh, as many dealers are, are shifting away from maybe uh, sending an abundance of communication to their customer base. Um, I'm a firm believer that somewhat of an engagement is it's imperative. Um, you have to continue to communicate proactively, uh, defend your loyalty base as, as we're hopefully starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and inventory hopefully starts to come trickle in into our stores within the next 8, 12, 14 months ahead of us. Communication is key because if, if we don't defend it, our competition will and we might lose uh, not only our loyalty retention side, but the opportunity for those new consumers that moved into your market share that now you have the opportunity to communicate to them. So uh, leverage your dealership marketing tools, um, ask a team responsible to continue to send the right message. Um, it's very important. Right? Um, our next slide. Um, how, how do we are setting the right expectations for our team? As, again, as we're moving forward and our customers um, are, are starting to understand that there might not be any cars for them, but the release is up or they might want to hold into their vehicle, but they're out of warranty and they just got a four or $5,000 service bill. What do I do? Uh, so making sure that we continue to engage with our customers, the service to sales process allows you to win those conquest clients that never bought from you. But if you do have the right communication in their lane, they might take your advice and move forward, um, you know, by building the trust, having the right communication, that one-to-one -one conversation. Um, so engagement should be, if not as, as high as before, just as high. And Lewis, you touch on a, on a good pro, uh, 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 component there is if that customer is six months out right now, before I remember walking to dealerships and we had, had the, the loyalty manager or the least loyalty manager saying, hey, 90 days, I'm going to talk to these customers all the time. Let's extend that out, right? Eight to nine months. Let's look at the next appointments for those customers that are 10 months out from, from trading in or, or turning in their lease or maybe even a year. And so when they, when, when they do come to your service drive and hopefully you have them engaged in your service drive, you're starting that communication then, right? So eight months from uh, I'm eight months away from a lease being up, guess what, Mr. Dealer it is, or Mr. Customer is right now is the time for you to start thinking about your next car. They may look at you like, well, I'm eight months out, but if they look at the big picture and it's all over the news, it's all over automotive news, hey, it's, it's time to, to start thinking about this long-term because right now you're not going to be able to get a car in 90 days. It's going to take you six to eight months out. And the, the consumer is going to love you because they're going to say, man, that Jose has really looked out for me this entire period. There's no way that I can buy my car from somewhere else, even if I am getting marketed to. No, my, my loyalty is to Jose over at ABC, right? So uh, in summary, so as we wrap up, Hopefully this information has been helpful for you guys today. I know we've, we've, we've spoken about three different components in how to engage into the service drive. We're, we're super excited about it. Something that Luciano and I have been very passionate about and been blessed with our company to really engage with and, and communicate with, with dealerships uh, across the country. We're car guys, just like all of you. So we understand the grind and that you guys have to go through every day. So let's just summarize this for just a second as we close out. So engage customers well before the return of the market, whether it's just saying hello, shaking their hands, wishing them a happy birthday, especially if they're in a the service drive, leveraging your service drive to build customer loyalty. We look at the financial return. It's a huge one, right? Hopefully you're looking to increase it for 2023 and make sure that we explore every single option to retain their business, not only necessarily to sell them the next car, but just to keep them at your store, keep them at your brand, keep them with your dealership to ensure long-term success for your stores. So with that being said, we're going to open it up to questions. Joe, is that, uh, do, you, do we have any questions out there? Uh, yes. Thank you, Jose and Luciano for the formative presentation. We do have uh, two poll questions that should just pop up on your screen first. If you could please take a few seconds to answer those. And as you're answering those, we'll get started with our questions, if you sure. don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, we do have one here. Do you have any specific recommendations for smaller stores looking to enhance their service to sales process? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the, the 100 RO uh, per day, it's not every single dealer. Uh, I've, I've been um, 
riding with stores who have a small service drive uh, and they can still benefit and still see, uh, you know, the fruits come out of a good processing place. Uh, maybe not dedicating a person or a team and hiring somebody, paying them salary and putting a whole uh, pay plan structure together, but utilizing the team that they currently have in place to optimize. So the accountability from allocating a manager, right? Not taking a manager off the floor, but keeping an eye on tracking the KPIs, setting the right goals, um, looking at every single car that comes in aligning with the pre-owned manager? Do we have a BDC that confirms service appointments? Can we spend a little bit of time in training our BDC that after they confirm the appointment, they can plant a seed? Uh, do we have a K KBB ICO center or a buying uh, uh, center for trades? Great. That is a perfect team that can tag it with maybe one or two of the salesperson on, on our team that can adequately increase the journey of the customer. Not, I'm not just here to buy your car. I'm here to help you in any way that I can. Yeah. Your car happens to be in need for us, uh, but uh, have you placed an order for a new car? Uh, we got to be able to not work in silos and make sure that all of our teams are working together. Certainly, um, pay plan, compensation, uh, selecting some sort of compensation for our service advisors if they help us uh, buy that car or get that customer. Um, all of that uh, combined can help us um, with smaller stores and not having a dedicated team to do this or a, or, a, or a person. And you can also rotate the staff too, Luch, right? So if you have a, a team of eight or nine and service point. Home, like let's have, you know, let's rotate the, the service drive on a daily basis so we don't have one guy doing it because you only have eight. So maybe on Monday you have one, Tuesday you have the other, so on and so forth. I, I've seen success with that as well. Good question. Thank you. A few more here. Uh, next, we have my team used to have a strong process, but now we have been staying away from appraising and putting in an offer on every car that enters the drive. Have you? How have you seen stores shift with no inventory? Now that's that's a big one, right? And I think it goes back to the touch point. You know, as as I was closing out, is is let's I, now is more more and more important than ever to be actually be proactive and 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 kind of going out further. To, to engage with those consumers. So hopefully, whether it's a form of, of marketing that you're doing at your store, just to stay in front, whether it's an offer that you're sending, hey, it's now it's the time to pre-order, or you're maybe in perfect equity position because you, you know, you're six, six to eight months out from, from actually being able to get a vehicle. So ensuring that you're, that you're staying in front of them. Some, some dealers may say, man, we're, we're doing way too much marketing. We're engaging with our consumers way too much. I think the opposite, right? And, and not just because I'm, I work for a marketing company or anything like that, but being able to stay engaged with those, con those consumers today is more importantly only because everyone else is going out and reaching and going after that, that client base. As, as you saw the numbers uh, previously that we shared, that retention rate is dropping, right? Because there's so much components of marketing that is happening today that let's just stretch it out a little bit. Instead of you engaging and starting in, nine, in you know, uh, 90 days, Let's go six to eight months. Let's go nine to 12 months and making sure that we're they're knowing that, hey, we got you. Don't worry about it. We're, I know we're, we have an inventory shortage, but let's just, you know, let's, let's put a plan in place to ensure that we that we, we have a car for you and ready to go at the, at the next time. So I'm, I'm, hoping, consistently I'm also that. hoping that the question came after uh, a, a slide that I spend a little bit of time talking about this. If, we, if you did have a strong process before and now you're staying away because you have no inventory. Um, I think what most dealers have been doing and changed and best practices that I've seen is utilizing the personalization even further and really dissecting the list of customers coming in, proactively understanding we don't want to talk to everybody, but there's this handful of customers that we have to talk to. So maybe, yes, we're talking to less people, but we'll continue to engage. Right. Okay. And next question. Well, I use the same process if I have a Spanish speaking customer audience. I speak Spanish, but sometimes the process does not work for me. Hmm. I, I, the process should be exactly the same. Um, we, me, uh, Jose and I, were both uh, fluent Spanish speakers. The process shouldn't be altered. Um, obviously, are, are we saying that the customer is Spanish speaking and, 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 and the salesperson or the, the team doesn't? speak Spanish or am I getting the, the question? Uh, the question is saying that the, the Spanish speaking customers, uh, Okay, she also speaks Spanish as well. So two oh, Spanish speakers. Oh. So if, if you guys, if you can communicate <laughs> at the same language, 
the process is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, we're looking at the behavior of the vehicle, the journey of their, their, their car. Uh, you know, is it a potential trade? Uh, are they out of warranty? We're looking at all the different uh, aspects of when they come in, how do we engage? But even if they come in and we already know they speak Spanish and we greet them in Spanish, that, that goes a long way, right? We took a step further to understand our customer coming in the drive. So Luch, she just responded, uh, Jackie, what we hear you out there. So uh, the customer speaks Spanish, but the salesperson, she's a services sales person, but the salesperson is a person that doesn't speak Spanish. Oh, That's yeah, that could be... Big. That could be a little challenging, um, obviously. Um, I'm not sure if you have someone at the store that, that can speak Spanish and translate an offer. Uh, there's got to be some way to be able to communicate to a Spanish-speaking customer, right? Uh, maybe even taking a step further, because is that one uh, Spanish-speaking client, maybe handwritten a personalized note uh, in Spanish from, from one of your fellow staff members that can speak Spanish and help you with that and preparing that note a day before. So when they come in, they already have something in their dash. Like, you know, I would love to, I don't know, just saying buy your car. And I think the only, the other thing too is, is um, that I would say, Luch, you and I went to the store down in, down in your neck of the woods. We had that Spanish speaker where oh, that yeah. Spanish speaker stayed with the process the entire way. So they, that she would set timers, right? So oh, yeah. if you hand that customer off to your salesperson, she would set a timer at 30 minute mark. She would go back and make sure she's okay and everything's working well. Then after the 45 minute mark, like she would literally know that, Hey, I have a person in the sales on the sales side that's talking and looking to buy a car. Yeah. So that way, you know, they, they, they didn't seem loot loss or let, didn't, they didn't seem that you just drop them off and out they go. Thank you. Next, I'm a marketing specialist for a smaller dealership. What is my role in the service to sales funnel? Marketing specialist. So I think, you know, if, if you're, if you're putting the data together uh, okay. and you are that marketing specialist, I think sharing that information uh, in, in, in the campaigns and gearing those campaigns towards communication and adding, even if it's just a campaign to say, Hey, we're running an event or, Hey, we're, we're running a special on Camry's or, or whatever the case may be always adding the PS lines or always communicating that information back of, Hey, we have the service drive as well. That's open seven days a week or being able to engage and just plug that in and come see our, if you have a, if you already have a service and sales process in place, right. You maybe say, Hey, come visit our, our purchasing team and know where you're at in your, in your, uh, financial uh, 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 path with your vehicle. So are you at the perfect equity position? Uh, are you, you know, maybe you're, you're in perfect time to trade in out of the car because you're going to get the most out of it. Like communication and messaging yeah. underneath that. And then if you have the data, right, if you have the click-through rates and if you have all those components and you're reviewing that, in the service to sales aspect, it's important because the message is going, we're going to figure out how we can track and measure that, 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 that message. And is it the right one? Are they bouncing out or, you know, just making sure that you have the right message uh, aligned for your service to sales process. Marketing could, I've seen complimentary appraisal, complimentary car wash. Um, I, I've seen all those added pieces in a lot of stores or they're starting to create that. If you already have the, the clients that you're outreaching, uh, making sure, as part of our new process in our service, uh, we evaluate a vehicle when they come in. Um, you know, a lot of that has been placed in a lot of marketing. Next, we have, uh, do you have any specific recommendations for compensating service advisors who support with inventory acquisitions? Yeah, 100%. Um, That's a big one. Have, love that yeah, one. we have a lot of pay plans. Uh, I mean, the typical bird dog pay plan of you know, $100, $150 for any referral that you give us in sales. I've seen that number go up to $350 now because of um, the amount of money that we're making in cars, right? I have a dealership where he said, you know, and now the guys are like pushing. They are like, I'll, I'll try to get the work, but if not, I'm, I'm sending it to the guys because I do, you know, four or five of these referrals a month. It already adds up. Uh, so creating, I, I have a store who actually created a sort of a staggered level approach for, for referrals. So let's say we've been doing a hundred dollar bird dog for over 15 years at that store and it gone stale. It went into a placebo effect. We get the same one, but we got that one service advisor that every single month he sends us 10 or 15 referrals. 
all right, so let's set up a unit bonus plan for that guy. So then everybody else can look at that and say, oh, wow. So just like a typical sales uh, you know, unit uh, number bonus, if you give me five referrals in one month, I'll match and I'll, I'll throw in an additional $1,000 or $500 or whatever. It be. So it's just like a staggered unit bonus approach for referrals for service advisors. Both, if we bought the car and we acquired it, or if they TO a customer and we put them in a, in a newer used car. Um, and, and it varies, right? For acquisitions, we can give them maybe $50. For an actual sale, we give them $150. Um, but that, I've seen all that change from one day to another at a store that implemented that and, and it's been working very well. The only thing I would add there too, because I know I, I, I was in a, I can't remember the state I was in, but um, I want to say it was, I want to say it was Virginia. I think it was where they, they didn't allow bird dog fees, right? Like they didn't allow that, that component of compensation. Yeah. The, the other thing that you would do is, is if that service advisor brought that car in and the, let's say the, the service was, you know, two, two to 2,500 bucks, $3,000, however the cost may be, or however it was that they were going to get compensated, the GM decided to still have them compensated for that unit only because the ultimate return on investment was greater than anything else because he saved the $300 on the, you know, the auction fee, he saved the $750 on the transportation fee. And I'm being light with those numbers, but still being able to pay uh, that, that service advisor is only going to get them more excited and more engaged. And, and they're going to continue to want to do this process for you. All right. I think we have time for one more here. One question has the statistic that 34% of customers utilize a dealership for service dropped or stayed flat over the past few years. That is a great question, uh, uh, Joe. I, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head because I, I just researched it just for specifically for this day, day and age. But that, that is a, I, I don't know the answer to that question and I would hate to just make something that's not factually correct. But uh, I don't know if there's a way we can communicate that information back out to, J uh, I think it's Jacob here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can definitely get that information out to you. I, I don't know the answer to that question though. Okay, no problem. Anything else? I uh, see one more. We'll do real quick. Uh, what if a store has recently opened a vehicle buying center? Doesn't that compete with the service drive for customers and inventory? It wouldn't necessarily compete. Um, I, I said it before. Let's just make sure that we have, uh, you know, a joint family type of work done. Uh, if we have a buying center, yes, their 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 main goal and pay plan and target is to to buy as many cars as they can, as they can. Uh, but let's think about the consumer. Let's think about the journey and the satisfaction of the customer. Yeah, we want to yeah. make sure the CSI and service goes up. We want to make sure that we're able to retain that loyalty customer when they're thinking about buying a car, not just thinking the immediate gratification of buying their trade, but thinking how can our team come together to make sure that that customer goes home happy. He swallows our car, but he already placed an order for a new one. Um, you know, it, it's not a competition. I'll say it's, it's an added plus. You have one piece of the service to sales process already embedded in your store, making sure now product. that, yeah, now, now making sure that, that you have a relationship with the service director, service manager, and their team, making sure you have a relationship with the, with the general manager, sales managers, and the sales team. Uh, so how can we all work together? Because this customer is what, what's important. It's not just the, his car or the next car. It's, it's the customer journey, the loyalty. In my opinion, uh, Luciano, on that is that you should have your service to sales process inside of that purchasing center as well, right? So like being able to, to, if you have, to your point, which is which is a great point, if you already have a process and they've been, they made that big of an investment to purchase cars, which is fantastic, you could, you could double your investment on just by implementing your service to sales team inside of that purchasing center or making sure that they have a component of it because it's, it's just going to add value because that's actually one of the hardest pieces to implement when you're looking at a service to sales process is making sure you have consistency in your product or in your purchasing process. So I would, I would uh, recommend that you, you speak with, with the teams and, and get that process you know, aligned with what the views are of that service to sales. Thank you both. So that's all the time we have for today. If you have any additional questions, we invite you to connect with our presenters uh, via their emails uh, at their website, Automotive Mastermind. Uh, as a quick
quick reminder, this webinar will be available on NADA.org to all NADA members. On behalf of NADA and Mastermind, we thank you all for joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.